Okay, so let's take a look at an example where we may actually want to start adding methods onto models. And then in the next part, we're gonna look at an intermediate model example with dates. So I have created a user controller with an index method. And over in my roots, I have a root for this. So over in the browser, I just see the following. Now, what we want to do is over in the database, create a new table, maybe for users. And we want to go ahead and add things like a first name. So maybe when your user registers in your application, they provide a first name. And let's just get rid of the nullable there. Duplicate this down and add a last name. Do the same thing. And maybe they also have an email address just in here as well. So this is the kind of data that you have. What we're going to look at now is how we can very easily combine the first and last name when we're working within views. So this is really important because the less kind of mess you create in your views, the better. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and fill these out with some uh, users, some example users. So let's go ahead and just create uh, just a few in here so we can go ahead and get set up with our user model. So let's just change this over and we'll just create one more to go ahead and demonstrate this. So let's create a last one just in here like so. OK, so we have a users table. We want to get a list of users and we want to show their full name. So this is where uh, models come in handy. So let's go and start to write this out. We're going to say users. We still have our database on our container. So we're going to say query and we're going to go ahead and select all columns from the users table. And we want to fetch these. So we want to fetch all and we want to fetch these as a class and we need to give a user model. So for now, we don't have one. So let's come over to our models directory and create a user model. So user.php. Let's set this up with our namespace. So it's under app and models. And we're going to create a user class. So we'll keep it kind of empty for now. We'll look at rendering this out and then we'll look at kind of fixing this up a little bit. So under our user controller, let's first of all not forget to use PDO. And then let's use app, models, and user. And let's go ahead and say that we want to fetch this as a user model. So let's return a view. So again, from our container, this C view. We're going to go ahead and render that. Pull in our request and our response so we can use that when we're rendering, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and render a view out. So let's create, say, a users folder and an index view. So index.twig. And uh, let's say user index just so we know that this is working. And let's render users index.twig. Perfect. And of course, we need to pass these down. So I'm just going to use compact users in this case. So let's come over, give that a refresh. And it looks like we've got an error. So query on null, no problem. So this CDB. And of course, what I forgot to do was extend my base controller. So we actually have access to that uh, container property. And there we go. So we have our user index. All right, so now let's go ahead and just list through the users and we'll see the kind of problems that we'll come across. So let's say for user in users, end that for down there. And again, let's just create a div for the class of user in here, create maybe an H3 and output the user's full name. So to do this, we would say user first name, we would have a space. And then in here, we would say user last name, like so. Let's give that a refresh. And we see that we expect to see that. Now, when you're doing things like this, it's important to think, well, maybe the user doesn't have to have a last name. So maybe over in the database under your schema, you were allowing null for the last name, but you weren't allowing null for the first name. So in this case, maybe Dale had a null value for the last name. Well, in this case, uh, if we just come over and see what happens here, it works. But the only problem is that you know, sometimes this data isn't going to work very well. So let's say you had a user dot first name, and then maybe for some reason you wanted to separate this with a forward slash. Now, in this case, uh, you know, it's a silly example, but we might not want to display this if one of the people doesn't have a last name. Well, in this case, what we could do is we could use an if statement in here. So we could say something like if user dot last name. Then we do this and then we can end the if just here. So let's do this like so. So end if. So you can do things like that and that fixes the problem. 
The only thing here though is you're going to create a pretty much a huge mess if you are working with anything more complex than this. And this is pretty simple. So you can already see that really we've probably got too much code in here than is actually necessary. Now, wouldn't it be lovely to be able to say something like in here, instead of using the first name and last name, user dot full name? Well, that's exactly why we've used a model because now what we can do is we can implement a method that's kind of separate from our views and returns either the first name or the full name. And this is kind of the point of using a model. It takes away the responsibility of formatting what you want to return away from your view. You shouldn't have to do this in your view. So let's take a look at exa uh, an example of implementing this full name method. So over on our user model, what we would do in this case is we would create a full name method. And we know that when we use a model for the data that we get returned from our database, we have these as public properties. So in this case, what we could do is maybe in double quotes, we could return this first name and then this last name. So in this case, we pretty much get the result that we want. Now, in the case of a user not having a last name, what we don't really want to do is return this because we technically have a space in here. So up here, we can now start to introduce some logic to return what we need if things uh, fall under a certain condition. So I'm gonna say if this last name is null, then we want to just return the first name like so. Or just to test this out, we can just test uh, by returning a string and we know that that's gonna return ABC because it falls under that condition. But in this case, we would want to only return the first name. So rather than doing all of the logic under here, we've now used one simple method and then we have a nice clean method in here to return the first name if there's no last name and the first name and the last name if there are both in there. So from here then, you can pretty much think, well, when I'm doing something inside of a view, would it be better within a model? So for example, and just as another example, let's say each of these users had some kind of balance under their account, and this was uh, a float value. Well, let's say we had these in here. So let's say five, 2.5 and 10.8. Well, in this case, we might want to format these uh, with some kind of currency symbol. Well, in this case, obviously, if we come over to our view, maybe we had the balance next to their name. So we could say user.balance like so, and that would work in exactly the same way as long as we output it like this. So we just check this out in the browser, this works. Now in this case, what we could do is start to use filters. So we could say uh, number format with twig uh, and actually do that in there. but really you might then want to add some kind of currency symbol like so well when you think about this should you really be doing this within your view now there's nothing necessarily wrong with this but again for anything more complex you may want to start to extract this out to your model so in this case what we would do is we could create a method on here like so called get formatted balance and we could just do this inside of here just kind of cleans things up a little bit so we know that we want to return number format or money format, depending this balance like so. And then you may want to go ahead and append on a symbol like so. And then over here, you could go ahead and replace this out by outputting that. So user dot get formatted balance. And it's as simple as that and it will work in exactly the same way. Of course, if we go ahead and update that to use two decimal places, we get the same result. Now, the reason this is helpful, once again, we might want to, in the case of the user having no balance, so if balance is null maybe, or even if it's zero, we might want to return like this, zero funds or something like that. So we might want to return something entirely different. So if we go over to the database, very quickly update this, so get rid of that, come over to here, and we get a little error, that's because we need to, of course, access the property, we get the following. Now, this isn't working correctly because we're using a strict type check here, but if I go ahead and remove that, 
or I cast the value, then we get the following, so zero funds. So hopefully this gives you a good idea as to how to kind of clean things up. This looks a lot cleaner than if we would have done all of this logic inside of our view. And it's not really the responsibility of the view to do all of this logic because our view is really just for displaying things and our models here are uh, giving us helpful methods on the data that we have for that particular model, whether it's a topic, a user or anything else.